Okay, Vida. So I'm starting for the day. Uh, yesterday we uh, finished about the exception handling, and uh, one thing remember all thing that we studied yesterday about the exceptions. Those exceptions were basically your uh, built-in exceptions. Okay, and uh, for the data science purpose, you would be required that much only. But if you want to build your own exception, you can also do that. And but for that means you can use it. There can be user defined exceptions as well. Means. Similarly, you have a built-in exceptions. There can be your user-defined exceptions as well. It's up to you, and you can build them if you know the classes concept. So let's move ahead to the next topic. This is known as classes and objects. What do you mean by a class, and what do you mean by object? And uh, one of the very, very important topic from interview point of view. People ask you what is object-oriented programming. What do you mean by object? What do you mean by class? What are the basic difference between a class and the object? And what is the advantage of using class and object concept? Okay, so let's understand what is in class and what is an object. Okay, hope I just confirm me once more. I'm I'm audible properly, everyone. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now let's begin with this. So we are st for starting with the class concept. Understand what is a class. Okay, understand properly class. What is a class? Class is nothing but a blueprint. Understand, class is nothing but a blueprint from which, understand, class is nothing but a blueprint from which objects are constructed. Understand properly each, every word of what I have written. Class is nothing but a blueprint from which objects are constructed. Bit of technical, don't worry, coming to that. Next. Class is something, understand what I'm writing. We'll come, I will explain each and every word what I am writing. Class is something which does not exist, exist physically. But objects exist. Okay, second statement. Third statement. Object. What are the objects? Objects are nothing but instance of the class. Nothing but, I'll tell you each and every word. Don't worry about what I'm writing. Just understand these are the technical terms that I'm writing so that when you are facing any interview or something, you should know what to explain them. Okay. Objects are nothing but instance of the class and possess the attributes and methods corresponding to the class now understand what do you mean by class and what do you mean by an object okay now see if every word see properly what i said class is a blueprint class is a blueprint by help of which we construct an object now see something we are human being right and we human being have been created by someone whom we call god okay so before creating human being God decided that he will be a human being. So he took example, for example, he took a pen and paper. He took a pen and paper and noted down something. Example, he noted down something on the pen and paper. He took, the God took, or he or she, doesn't matter, took a, a pen and paper. Okay. On this, he writes what? He writes that there should, there should be some attributes that human being should satisfy, and there should be some functions that human should be capable of performing. I'm repeating once again, the God decided that there should be some attributes that each human should satisfy, and there should be some functions that human should be capable of performing. So he noted down something, okay? I'm planning to make human beings, okay? He's planning to make human being, and he's saying that the every human should satisfy certain attributes and certain functions. Should be capable of performing certain functions, capable of performing some functions, certain functions. Okay. 
understand each and step very properly. What he decided, he decided to construct human beings. Then he decided, okay, I've decided to construct human beings. Then every human being should have some attributes. Example, example, each of us human being has certain name, right? Each of us human being has certain name. Each of us human being has certain age. Right? I'm just taking an example. Every one of us has some name. Every one of us has some age. Means attributes. Now, he said every human being should be capable of performing certain functions. Example, every human being should be able to walk, able to talk, okay? able to eat, uh, able to study, something like that. Right? Or able to see anything like that, right? So he decided, took a pen and paper and noted down, I wanted to create a human being. Okay, he decided, okay, I want to create a human being. And for every human being, the properties that every human being should satisfy, he noted down on the paper that he should have some attributes, for example, name and age. Okay, second, he should be capable of performing some functions like walk, talk, eat, able to study or something like that. He write everything on the paper. Nothing, nothing is available, means human being is still not available. But using this pen and paper, whatever he has written on the paper and pen and paper, okay, means he wrote down these are the attributes, these are the functions. He created the human being, which actually physically exists. Example, me, Ravir Saxena. He created me from which, from the same document that he created himself, like where everything is written, what attributes the human being should satisfy. So who I am, I have been created from that blueprint. I have been created from that blueprint, right? Then I will be known as an object. And I physically exist. And I physically exist. Okay, I am physically exist. I am an object. An object of what? I am the object of same class that God created. Means the God created a blueprint known as human being. And this human being blueprint is nothing but your class. This blueprint that he created means this thing, everything like this. What property should be satisfied? What functions he should be capable of performing? Means this thing he wrote down. There is a human being should be created. So he created a blueprint. And from that blueprint, he constructed human beings. And once we are created from that class, means I physically exist. So I will be known as instance of that class, or I will be known as object. Okay, so remember, object physically exists because I am a human being, right? I belong to a human being class. Okay, if somebody, if suppose you are giving an interview, somebody comes to you, please uh, bring a human being. So what will you say, sir? Which human being? Everyone here sitting, say, 100 people or 200 people are human being only. Which you want? So human being is what? Right? Similarly, example, understand. Uh, somebody is, uh, you went to a strange place. Okay, and you are not able to find a single person over there, but suddenly you see someone and he looks like he's walking, standing on his feet. He's, uh, uh, he's uh, talking to someone, something like that. So immediately how you guess, oh, he's a human being, right? Let me talk to him. How you recognize? By his attributes, by his functions, right? But actually he's a person, he's object of human being class. Now tell me, Got an idea what is an object and what is a class? Please. Yes, is it clear? So what is a class? Class is a blueprint from which objects are constructed. Class physically does not exist. Okay. Class physically does not exist. Objects physically exist. Objects physically exist. Remember that. Okay, let me take an example. You will tell me yourself. Okay, suppose uh, one thing is there. I wrote dog. Okay, I wrote dog. Then I wrote that uh, myself, Praveer, have a dog, which is Doberman, and his name is Bruno. Okay, and you have a dog whose name is Tyson. Example, I'm just taking an example. I'm writing three words here, dog. Bruno and Tyson. Okay. 
can you tell me among these three words suppose this is first word this is second word this is third word okay i repeat once again there is a word known as dog there is a word known as bruno but it is actually the name of the dog that i am having okay third tyson is actually the name of dog that you are having can you tell me which one among these one two three words which is your class and which are your objects first one is class and two three are your uh, object sir. perfect everyone is perfect means you got an idea what is a class and what is an object okay so this is your class you just say it's a dog it's a dog right so it's a class of that <coughs> sorry it's a class of that dog right and when some physically exist then it is a your object okay so this is your object one of the same class dog class right this is object two of dog class perfectly fine no issue with that object one of dog class object two of dog class okay and what happens once they belong to dog class okay once they belong to dog class they will satisfy all the attributes and all the functions of the same class is it fine so means they will stand on four feet means two hands and legs whatever you say okay they will walk like a dog they will bark all these properties are defined when someone created a blueprint of dog god itself god created a blueprint that dog should satisfy these attribute they should be able to perform such functions so these functions will be by default when we create a instance of that when we create instance of that then what we say that they possess the characteristics or attributes and the functions of that particular class okay now please read these three lines and in, in these three lines if you have a single doubt please tell me even a single doubt any single doubt in these three lines no doubt no, sir great perfect so i'm moving ahead now how do we create class how do we create class in python okay. so create a class in python you will write a keywords class c l a s s first of all okay you will write a keyword class c l a s s after that you will write the name of your class okay you will write the name of the class you will write the name of your class and there is something a uh, different uh, you can say convention while we are naming the classes remember so what is the people used to follow not mandatory but is a recommended practice that whenever you are naming any class start that name with a capital letter start that name with a capital letter so i am for example and second suppose there are two words which are coming together we have suppose there are two different words coming together so don't put a space there just make sure that when two words are coming together the starting letter of them are capital example i said my then m should be capital and c should be capital like this so i made like this make class this is a convention but people used to follow okay so i'm writing right now a class known as example student class so i will give my name a student class okay after writing the name you will put bracket very much like when we create function same way you will put a function now inside this there's an option to put a word known as object and you see one side type this it turned green it turned green if i type x it won't turn green if i write a string it won't turn green but if i'm writing a keyword object it's turning green means it's a keyword what is object object is the root class of every class in python object is the root class of every <coughs> every class in python for example if somebody says who are the root origin of uh, mankind so somebody says adam and eve example they are the root class 
from there everything originated once they came i don't know it is true or false but that's what we have studied so far so okay so every class every class in python has been derived from the class known as object okay so by writing this by writing this means liking this class student object what you are telling you are telling your root class that i am creating one more class okay but of course you are the root class i will be under you always so all the classes in the python belongs to a root class object and similarly whatever i am creating right now will also be a part of object class only but it is by default there need not mention if you put it there fine don't put it there perfectly fine no issue is going to happen okay for sake of simplicity i am not putting here if you want to put it it's entirely your choice but not mandatory okay then i'll put a colon here like we do in the function then i put a colon here and press enter when i press enter i will land under the indentation okay very much like this very much like this okay now uh, similarly similarly the way we define function remember we used to write our doc string same procedure you can follow here how do we write doc string everyone knows triple quotes and anything you can write this is my student class example i'm just taking an example so that when i search for the help statement somebody wants to know what student class does he can get an idea so same thing is being written here the way we do in the function okay press enter now see properly what we are going to do after that after that you will write a function f now i'm defining a function and that function see what is happening the much awaited function which rama was waiting for is coming here type underscore underscore two underscore in it underscore underscore okay underscore underscore in it underscore underscore what is this it is a special matter known as constructor matter let me write it down here somewhere it's a special matter the underscore underscore in it underscore underscore is a special method and let me tell you one thing i'm writing here method whenever we will use the functions inside a class the functions inside the class are known as method remember that is it fine everyone the functions inside a class are known as method is it okay is it yes, fine sir. okay yes, functions and method are same thing just thing is that we are are using the functions when we are referring any class then it will be known as method and let me tell you one thing example let's see one thing and in python everything uh, is an object remember everything is object is object oriented everything is an object exam object of some class everything in python is an object of some class example uh, let me show you one thing i created a variable a equals to Just p. I type p, okay, and then I did print. Then I did print type of p. See properly. Print type of p. So let me run this. Can you see what it is saying? We created an object a here. We created an object here. Actually, we have created an object here a, and this a belongs to a class known as string class similarly i created an object a equal to 3 okay and print type of a see it belongs to a class of integer means there is an object we created an object of which class integer class right similarly i created a list 1 comma 2 comma 3 and i again went here print type of a okay can you see this belongs to a class list okay so whenever we 
declare variables like this, actually we are creating objects. We are creating an objects, right? String is a class which exists. Integer is a class which exists, but their actual uses come when we create objects from them. When we create objects from them, then their real usage is coming. Here, a equals to p we are using means we are initializing a variable or we are declaring a variable here. Then what is happening? You creating an object of string class. You're creating an object of integer class. You're creating an object of list class. Let me name, name them differently so that I can show you what you mean by that. Now, let me run these cells again, run, run, run. Okay, and see one thing, what I mentioned here, objects are nothing but instance of the class and possess the attributes and methods corresponding to the class. Okay, means whatever, attributes and method that an object is supposed to have in the class, all that object will incorporate in itself. For example, let me go here, okay? And check, A is a type, is a, uh, A belongs to the class string. So when I press A dot and press F and tap, there are certain functions or certain methods. Now understand what we will call them. These are functions or methods. Please tell me. These are functions or methods. They methods. belong. Yes, they belong Method. to class string. So these are methods now. Okay. So we have certain capitalized case fold, center, count, end switch, something, find, format, format map. Something is there. split, swap case, upper, Z fill, whatever is there. Something is there. Okay. So who created all these methods? Someone. Someone who developed the Python, he thought that, okay, there should be a class string. And when somebody is having the data type string, then these operations must be supported in these. These operation must be supported, right? So we are seeing those methods. So it means the object will be able to perform these methods. I mean, these methods will be operate on A possibilities. There. We can use them. Okay, now go to the B. B is of... Uh, what is this? Let me run it again. B is equal to three. Oh, sorry. B is equal to three. I'm running it. B close to the belongs to the class in teacher. It will have different sets of methods, different set of method. Because if you say uh, capitalize integer, is it a good statement? Can you capitalize or can you lowercase integer? You can't do that. So those functions will not be available here. Only those methods will be available, which integer should be capable of performing. So I'm pressing tab here. Can see only those operations which integer can support are available to this object B, right? Similarly, if we go here to the this was string, this is list. Let me go to the list now and run it and check C dot tap. See a different kind of methods are appearing now. Can you see that? Right? Different kind of methods are appearing there. So this is the thing means whenever you are creating a class, first create a blueprint. What actually you expect? Okay, the same way that Python programmer has done, who have developed the Python, he created a blueprint. Okay, I wanted to have a class string. It should be having these attributes. It should be capable of performing these methods. And it declare all these attributes in the method in your class, the way we are going to do about in a few minutes. Okay. And once you create an object of that class, you will be having those attributes and you will be able to perform those methods or functions. I hope things are crystal clear with everyone. Tell me, is it fine? Yes, sir. Any doubt, any even single doubt, please let me know. Is it fine? Sir, can you brief it once again? Which thing? Which thing you want sir, to from that uh, initialize one? That was, no, I was no, not that, able to that, hear. That, that I will explain. Don't worry. I am not coming to that. I'll come to that. Don't worry. Okay, I'll come sir. to I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Okay, okay. okay sir. Don't worry. This thing are clear line four, five, and six. Four, five, and six are clear. Okay, somebody may ask you, somebody may ask you, he, uh, okay, you have declared a variable here, you declared a variable here, they are declared a variable here, then what happens when we see a dot, 
and press tab, a different set of methods are appearing here or different set of attributes are appearing here. Okay, and when you declare like this integer, a different set of attributes are appear here. So how will you uh, answer him? Why this is happening? So you will, what do you say? They belong to different class. And every class may have different attributes. They may have different methods. That's why different methods are appearing here. I hope it is clear with everyone now. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, please. Okay, sir, actually, you have defined A, B, C. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. here, basically, A, A is, de is denoting an object and which belongs to string class. Perfect, perfect, yes. Similarly, yes. B is an object that belongs to integer class and yes. C is an object that belongs to this class. Yes, yes, yes. That is perfect. fine, sir. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 100% perfect. Okay, so thank you. 100% perfect. Right. These are these, these actually you can see these are the things which physically exist, right? Now A exists here. Right? A exists here. B exists here. C exists here. These things physically exist. That's why they are object. As simple as that. And you are able to use them. You are able to use them. Whenever something which is not available physically can you use that. You cannot use that. You are able to use them. You can use your A, B, or C anywhere you want, and you can able to perform all the functions that have been defined for the string class or methods you have, that has been defined for the string class or list class or integer class directly. I'm just naming a few. You can you can use any other variable if you want. For example, I want to create a dictionary. Let me create a dictionary for you. And simplest way of doing the dictionary, remember? Easiest way of doing declaring a dictionary. How can we do that? Remember? We can, we can second X equal to one, Y is equal to two. And put it yeah, as simple as that. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes, Peter. Uh, sir, what is the difference between attribute and method? The attributes are nothing but the properties that something should satisfy. Okay. For example, every human being has a uh, name, right? Everyone has a name or not? Yes, sir. Everyone has certain age. Right? Yes, sir. Right? Everyone has certain uh, example. I don't want to input anything like everyone has certain cast. Example. I'm just taking an example. I'm just taking an example. These are what? These are attributes. Yes, sir. These are attributes, right? And when you are able to perform some action, whenever you are able to perform some action, those actions are nothing but your functions or methods. Okay, For example, so you can walk. You can walk, right? You can okay. talk. These, these are the actions that you will be able to perform. Walk, talk, eat, sleep. Right? Is it fine? Yes, sir. Good. Sir, but uh, in the above example, sir, will you please explain in that what is attribute and what is uh, which ex which example? Uh, sir, before uh, means for a dot means that a dot append or something like that. So these, are, these are methods. Remember, whenever you will find an attribute, no, you can access that with the help of only dot. Just press dot. Example, I write uh, it has an attribute h. I will be using that. So you don't have to put bracket there. Okay. Whenever you find any bracket, remember that is a method or a function. Okay. okay. And once you remove that and it is able to give you some value, it will be attribute. Okay. So then for list class, what will be uh, attribute and method? No, if it is available there, if it is available there, you can see that here only the list class for now, only methods are available. You can check that. Achha, oh, okay, sir. Okay. These are only the methods, uh -huh. right? These are the methods which are available here. Let me create some attributes for you. Let me create. Don't worry. I'm coming okay. to that one. Now I'm coming to our main class. Okay. So I'm copying it and going down. So okay. So that it should be able to clear. So coming here, so we get, we want to write the class for the student. Okay. And uh, before defining this, okay, before defining this, uh, I suppose I create a blueprint. What a blueprint is, I write on the pen and paper. I write on the paper. Okay, there should be a student and every student should have a name. Okay. Uh, every student should have a branch example. If you're engineering a student, okay. second attribute can be branch. Uh, third attribute, everyone can have a year in which year he's studying. Example, I'm just taking an example. Okay. Or for sake of simplicity, for I'm taking just two one, for example, name and age. 
I decided name and age. Okay. And similarly, you can define these are the uh, nothing but your attributes. These are nothing but your attributes. And whenever a student is there, okay, so what should happen? He should be able to perform some function. I'm just giving an example. He should be able to perform some function. For example, whatever function you want. I'm just taking an example. So let's say I want to print uh, his name and age, whatever his name and age is. Or you can also define for according to his name and age, I want to define a function which will do something else. Okay. So what we want, we want two attributes and we want one function which will print his name and age. I'll define whatever I want to do. So entirely my choice, entirely my choice. Okay. So how will I create that understand? I write a keyword class. Then I decided, okay, the name of the, my class will be student. Then I put a bracket here. And under the bracket, there's an option. I can put an object keyword here or I can skip. <laughs> if you even don't put there, doesn't matter. By default, it will take it automatically okay? because everything belongs to the root class and the root class is nothing but an object, okay? object class. Here I wrote, uh, wrote a doc string. You just somebody looks, wants to see what the student class is. Then I can put a doc string here. Then at first step, at first step, you define this. Okay? Even, even this is not, if you want to define just a class, even this is not mandatory. Nothing is mandatory. I can skip all these things, for example. I can type just a statement pass and nothing will happen. Means do nothing. And class will be created. Let me see. If you just want to create a class for nothing, for no purpose, I write a keyword class, student, and just put a statement pass. Your class will be created for sure. Then didn't get any error. Perfectly fine. My class has been created. Right? Without doing anything, means this we can create a class this way. Means it does nothing. And who has such time to waste the time? Why will we create any class useless? So if we have to do some tasks for that purpose, what I am going to do? See, I'm removing this, putting my doc string back. Okay, remember this thing means it is doing nothing right now. Still, we are able to create a class. Means for creating a class. Only these are mandatory, your class name, even the class keyword, your uh, name of the class and the statement pass. Your class will be created, okay? But it has no sense because it's useless class for us. But we don't have such much time means to waste our time. So we'll create something meaningful. So I'm writing, sorry, I'm writing here. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, so what is happening? This is our, sample class okay and after that i define my first method after that i define my first method f and if i ask you it is mandatory so your answer will be yes or no is it mandatory if i define a method no looking at back nothing is mandatory okay looking at this nothing is mandatory but it is recommended because to create an object to create an object of this class, you will need this. Okay? You will need this. I will tell you in which cases you will need it and in which cases you won't need it. Don't worry about that. For example, we want to create a class. Then first of all, I will write a simple method. And method is nothing but a function inside a class. And we know how to define a function by using the keyword tab. And in it, I write first of all a method known as init method, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And it is what? It is known as a constructor method. I'm writing here. It is known as constructor method. Okay. And why it is used? It is simply used to initialize our variables. And every time, and every time you create an object of the class, for example, I created an object of the class here. So first of all, what will be called? This init method will be called. Initialization method will be called. The moment we create an object, first of all, this method will be called. And this method is known as constructor method, which is used to initialize our variables. Means, for example, in the C programming language, you must have seen the statements like that, int equals to int A equals to three or int B equal to three. Same way it is doing initialization. 
okay and when you are using in it after that you will put a bracket and you will put one minimum argument which you have to put minimum one argument which you have to put which is known as self which is known as self so you are using in it here you have to mandatorily use self okay you have to use a keyword known as self okay this is what people use after that you can other put other arguments as well but when we will put it i will tell you put here put a colon press enter remove this i will paste it up now control x Okay. So, okay. I came here. Let me check it. Is it at the same one, two, three, four? After that, once you declare that, now you will work. How many attributes you want? Example: How many attributes we decided? We decided to have a name. We decided to have a age. Okay. So what you will write here? Remember. self i'll tell you what the self is don't worry self dot now whatever name of the attribute you want to give whatever name of the attribute you want to give for example name name and initialize it with anything you want anything you want for example i'm putting my name okay. i decided one more attribute remember h so i put self dot h i'll come in few seconds only what is self age and suppose age is 32 till this point i came now understand what is self okay see what happens is that here i equals to b is equal to 3 i equals b equal to 3 so what i am doing i'm creating an object i'm creating an object of which class in teacher class okay i'm creating an object of integer class now what happens the moment you create an object of the class for example i create an object of the class uh, let's say i uh, any name i put here uh, let's say any name s1 and how we create an object of the class just call the class what is the class name student so very much like you call a uh, function call this is to and it is not yet been completed that's why i'm leaving i will will do it again we will means i will continue after this don't worry so once i run this statement this is nothing but creating an object of this class also known as instantiation i am creating the instance of the class student nothing but we can also say i am creating an object of that class The class student again, or this process is also known as instantiation. When you are creating instantiation of any class, that is known as instantiation. Just make it English, okay? So once we create an object of a class, and suppose I create one more instance of the class, because is it mandatory that in the class only one student will be there? There will be fifty students. There will be fifty students, right? Suppose there is a student number two, and I create one more instance of the class. okay so what happens when we create these instances when we create instances okay so what will happen is that the moment this instance is created a memory location a memory location will be assigned to s1 and a different memory location will be assigned to s2 okay so every object every object that you have created will be assigned a different memory location doesn't matter they belong to the same class for example i created an object of integer class let's say a equal to 3 and second object of the integer class let's say 4 they both belong to same class okay and let me print your memory location the id of a print id of b you will see that both belong to same class but these are different objects of same class so a will be assigned a different memory location b will be assigned a different memory location let me run that and can you see that a different memory location has been assigned to the different objects of same class okay and that address is saved by self variable the self variable knows where 
this S one's memory address is saved. S one's memory address is saved. Okay, so the moment you create an object of the class, a memory location will be assigned to that object, and that object will be stored by variable known as self. Is it fine? Right? Means what will happen? So for S one, a different memory address will be there. A different memory address will be there. So when self is having that address, and we are using statement self dot name. So what we are telling, okay, go to the memory location of S one, go to the memory location of S one, and save an attribute name whose variable whose value is Prabir. Again, go to the same memory location as S one, save an attribute age and value equals to thirty two. Okay, this is one is for S one. When you created next instance of the S two, okay. So again, init method will be called. Now self will have a different value, value corresponding to S two, value of what? Memory address, address corresponding to S two. Now it will say at that address, store a variable name is equal to Rafir, age equal to thirty two. Now tell me, is it okay? What the self does? If I ask you, if I ask no, you, sir, no, if sir. I if I ask you at any moment, how many addresses self will store? If I ask you at any moment, at any given moment, how many address the self will store? For example, S one, how many address the self will store? For S one, two and one, only one, only one corresponding to S one. While moving to the S two, then. Second address, S one will belong to a different address. F two will belong to different address. Means, with the help of self, we know that once we create an object of the class, a different memory location is going to be assigned to us. That's hundred percent surety. We saw an example. So, if anything is to be saved, please save it here. Right? If anything is to be saved in corresponding to A, please save it here. And how can we save that until we use self? Who knows the address? The address is known by the self only. Address is known by the self only. I am repeating once again. The moment we create an object from the class, a memory location is assigned to us, and that memory location address is known by the self. So, while writing this statement, what we are saying: go to the memory location corresponding to S one. Create a variable name there. The name is name. Variable's name is name, and assign the value Pratik. Again, age thirty two. Okay. Now, when S two comes, a new memory location will be coming, and then S two is memory address will be saved by itself. Then self will tell. Okay, put this name here. Put this name again. The same memory location of S two. By this way, you will say that this is wrong. S one and S two, both are student. They will save same name, right or wrong? In current scenario, they will save same name or not? Because we have fixed this, we have fixed it. So they will be having the same name. But don't worry, we do have a power of changing that. We have a power of changing that. We are going to see very soon. Now tell me, somebody was asking something. Somebody was asking something. Please, yes. Uh, sir, actually, uh, whatever you have uh, make us understand that is clear. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you could line at least one or two sentences uh, uh, about the function of self, so that will be helpful. The self is that I'm telling. Uh, see, what will happen? Self is a variable. First of all, remember, self is what? Self is also a variable. Yeah, self is a variable which holds the address of the instance of the class. Remember that. Okay. self holds the address of the memory location of the instance of the class or the object of the class is it fine yes, okay sir. or at any at at any one point self will point to one object at when at at any at any given point self will uh, point to one given object is it fine okay now yes sir. now see by this way you may say what is this happening self this is not uh, right now we are seeing that 
we have a power of changing it don't worry okay so now two attributes are done now define a method and these variables these variables that we have known uh, written here are known as remember instance variables instance variables because whatever we have written here they belong to one instance of the class okay they belong to one instance of the class these are known as instance variables similarly we should create an instance method so i'm creating a method def and suppose method name is just any name prime method it's my name it's a keyword so let me change another name mm, wish let me say wish method name is wish now see if you don't want to use these variables which variables instance variables then don't do anything just put a colon normal way move ahead and do print hello perfectly fine okay if you don't want to use these instance variables but if you want to use these instance variables means this name and age then you have to put a again same word self you have to use a same word again self if you want to use them okay and we wanted to use them we want to print their name and age right so i'm writing here see hello your name is and we know how to write bracket format string i'm using is and your age is again this okay after that dot format Let me close it here. Yes. Then dot format. After dot format, we'll create brackets, and inside this, we will write what we want in first bracket and what we want in the second bracket. In first bracket, what we want name. So you can't directly write name. You use the same thing. Self dot name. If you want to access them, put self dot name, comma, self dot age. Okay. Self dot name. self dot age your first class is created you have successfully created your first class and let me run it let me run it okay i repeat again no mandatory that you put a self here if you want to use these instance variables means name and age then put it here otherwise you can do the way you want and how will you access inside a function or anywhere by using the self not name self dot age so i'm running it right now i run it let me get instance okay so suppose uh, First instance is anything myself Praveen, like putting a name Praveen and creating an instance of the class. And how will I create? Okay. Fine. Run it. And the moment I run it, understand what is going to happen. Understand what is going to happen. What will be called? Init method will be called. Okay. Init method will be called, and the memory location will be assigned to me. To which? To Praveen. Means I am creating an object, or I am creating an instance of the class, and that address will go to the self. Now, at the same address, name will be assigned Praveer, and age will be assigned to Sakhi. Fine, and these method will be available to me that you can see that I am running the instance. Perfectly done. Now, how I will access the same way we did in the list and tuple? We type my object name, press dot. And press tab. So whatever thing is there, your attributes or your functions that will be available here. Let me press tab. Can you see? We wrote two attributes, name and age, available, and we did a function wish. Everything is available, right or wrong? Right. Now suppose, as as I know already, my uh, age is an attribute. Okay. So I'm typing age. And somebody was asking how to check the attribute. Just yet. Don't put anything. Okay. And let me run it. Let me run it. See, age has a add value. Attribute. Next attribute, Ravi dot name. Okay, let me run it. Ravi, perfectly fine. Now, I want to access a method. So, I, how do I access Ravi dot? What is the name of the method? Wish. And how do we access the method? Remember, we put brackets. The moment I put it here. You say hello. Your name is Praveer, and your age is uh, whatever I mean, thirty-two. Let me run this. Can you check it, please? Is it fine, everyone? Till this point, I need out. 
till this point. Don't worry, let me move to the second object so that you can understand better. Let me get a new uh, object and suppose the name of the person is Utkarsh. Okay, and he uh, is 10 years younger than me, he's 22 years old. So let me get an instance of the same class. He's a student itself. Student. Perfectly fine, created. But by default, by default, he will be having the same names. He will be having the same names. Utkarsh dot age, everything will be same age. Again, Utkarsh dot name. Okay, and even if I run function Utkarsh, sorry, method Utkarsh dot wish, it's going to be same. This is absolute rubbish. What is happening? So what should I do? What should I do? I should change the name to, I should change the name to Utkarsh and set his age to 32, but, but again, that should reflect at this instance level only. Agree or not. If it's changed my system as a whole, then what will happen? This system will become wrong. Where we won't change, we won't change where the Utkarsh instance is there. So that I can do in fraction of second. How I'm going to do that? See, very simple. I'll type Utkarsh, okay? Dot attribute h equals to, simple thing. Okay, I'm changing the attribute. Let me give a, you should understand. I'm changing attribute, attribute for one object. Okay. Utkarsh dot age, I said 22. Perfect. Utkarsh dot name equal to Utkarsh. Fine. Let me run this. Let me run this. Okay. Now, check Utkarsh or create an instance, instance we already already created, check Utkarsh dot h has been 22, perfect. My problem has been solved. Utkarsh dot name has been Utkarsh, perfect. Let me check the function also, Utkarsh dot wish. Perfect. Hello, your name is Utkarsh and age is 22. But I change in one instance. See, that's the beauty of the class. That's the beauty of the class. And basically, that's the power of the self. Remember, every changes I made, made, every changes I made happens at with memory location, the memory location corresponding to Utkarsh only. Agree or not? That's what's the role of soul. Every changes that I made happened at the memory location of Utkarsh only. My memory location won't affect it. Check me, check. Praveer was my object, dot age is still 32. Praveer dot name is still Praveer. Praveer dot wish, everything perfect. This is the beauty. This is the beauty means everything. You, I made a local changes. I mean, changes happened in the only one particular object. And that could become possible because of this self. It refers to current instance of the object itself. Now tell me, I think your doubts must have been cleared. Means we have the power of changing. Define anything you want here. Later on, once we declare it, we can change it. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Everyone, that's why I, I didn't ask you in between the Utkars. That's why wait, let's wait and let me show, show you the power. One more thing, one more thing, okay? We are changing later on. Remember, any changes made to one object won't affect the other object because these are happening at the object level or the instance level. All this is happening at the object level or the instance level. Is it fine? Now tell me, if I made some changes at the Praveer, will they reflect at the Utkarsh? If you get the concept, please tell me. If I made some changes at the Praveer level, will the changes reflect at the Utkarsh level? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. Perfect. Okay. Everything will be happening at the object level or at the instance level. Now see. Earlier, we are changing, we are wasting the time. Let me copy it. Let me copy it. And where I was working here. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm coming here. 
and after this self variable after this self variable i define anything anything i want suppose i need name okay and suppose name i need in string i need an argument from the user okay i need an argument earlier what was happening i defined pravir i defined 32 then later on i was changing for the push let me remove that let let the user supply let the user supply so that your steps are safe so what i can do i can put self name equals to just put empty string here so that you can recognize we need a string okay empty string and for h just put a number example zero that's it put a number equal to zero and here here what do you do when you are typing self dot name whatever whatever name you have put it here for example name I, whatever name i want to put suppose i said names let me put names so that you can differentiate between name and names okay that's why i'm changing it intentionally you can put a name itself but i'm intentionally changing you don't get confused that this and this are same just map means whatever is where you want a string you want a string in the place of name so copy remove this and type your names okay and at the age level you want numeric digit so type h just it means we have made it open for the user to enter the arguments you can put as many as you want depending upon your requirement okay i'm running it perfect now i am creating two objects let's create some object of revere itself again or different different object let me create uh any name can you let's say amit okay i'm making a name amit okay. and uh, calling calling my student or not calling means creating an instance student okay and let me go press shift and tab inside can you see inside it is telling you you have to put two arguments here can you see that you have to put two arguments there which one name and each okay so i put first argument i saw it was in bracket that we have to put in a string so okay the name is amit and his age is let's say 17 years okay let me run it of it let me check everything about the amit amit dot h because it's an attribute let me press tab all both the attributes age and name is there as well as the method is there let me press h run it you can see his age is 70 right let me check amit dot uh, name his name is amit let me run the function or dip amit dot fish perfect how your name is amit your age is 17. now create another instance very easy to create right this way is very easy we don't have to modify it earlier was uh, we need to do some modification but we should know all the ca uh, capabilities that classes have right that's why it started with without arguments from the user now i'm putting the argument with the user and this is a preferred method you can understand it so. we don't have to do the modification earlier and earlier okay so again i'm coming here and now putting the name suppose say any name uh, varsha okay. the name is varsha and she's again we want to create of student class okay and name is as we mentioned her name is varsha and uh, uh, her age is let's say 16. Okay. two arguments we have given let's run it let's check varsha's h varsha dot h perfect she is 16. varsha dot uh, name of course it is varsha and varsha dot fish this way hello your name is Varsha and your age is 16. tell me any doubt even a single doubt please tell me now no that's great actually it is considered as one of the toughest topic but if you're getting it i'm very happy uh, excuse me sir yes yes uh, sir can we change the name of init method or no uh, no 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 you cannot change that is, that is a actually special method you cannot change it init method will remain in it method only it's a, a predefined function you have to use it that's why the name has been given init method this is the by default you have to use you can see that let me show you. okay you have to use it as it is the way it is given init method will be used see 
underscore underscore it's not my it's not user defined okay it's not user defined okay. let me or let me show you this way. special methods in python okay if i see at the top itself you can see can you see that it's a special yes. method eh? it's a special method we cannot change we cannot change any doubt please anyone then tell me hope it is clear with everyone yes sir no problems perfect perfect okay now see let me take an example here one thing is here so what is happening everything here the changes are happening at the instance level now suppose you want some changes to happen at the not at the instance level you must you want some changes like you made some changes and the changes are reflected everywhere in every instance of the class example you want it to be reflected in everywhere you want everywhere you want means you may make changes anywhere it is going to reflect at any point any point right then what you have to do what you have to do okay these all things were happening under the one instance okay one instance we are making some changes that changes are happening locally to that instance only it was not reflecting at that level so if you want changes to reflect at class level instead of object level understand now the changes that we were making making here right we made make some changes here right in the beginning i changed the name of utkarsh i changed the name age of utkarsh but this were happening only at the current object level not at the class level otherwise what could have happened if i would have changed here 22 and utkarsh then they should have been reflected in praveer as well but it didn't happen whatever changes happened that were happened at the object level or at the instance level if something happens at the class level that's a different thing okay for example we are the human beings okay i have a different age of it you have a different uh, age of it my name is different your name is different that is absolutely of type for example i may change my name i my name is praveer and suddenly i decided uh, some jyotish told me if you put double p in the praveer first of all your life is going to be changed and you are going to become superstar in a night or day something like that they made something like that and made change my change i can make my change and that is local to me will it affect you it won't affect you doesn't matter what name i change there is a local thing to me okay but remember something happens at the class level for example god decided something god decided something that these they people have two hands and uh, they are not able to do something with these two hands let me give them one more hand okay god decided not we don't decided then what he did he made some changes in the blueprint human will not have two hands they will have three hands if god decided and he made the changes in the blueprint will it affect only me or will it affect every one of us if we made the changes in the blueprint itself while declaring means at the class level he decided human being will have three hands human being will have three hands okay so then what is it going to happen will it impact all of us or will it affect some one individuals impact all of us yes remember same way earlier if you have studied uh, primitive history we people used to have tails everyone used to have tails remember but god decided this tail is of no use then it vanished from us then it vanished from all of us okay because that happened at the class level human being level okay all that happened at the class level or human being level hope it is clear so whenever you want some changes to happen at blueprint level or the class level so we don't have to use instance variable in fact we have to go to the class variables and class methods the method that we have used here in our function these are your instance variables and this is your instance method because we have used the word key wish self here right these are your even you don't put self here still it will be a instance method because to use the class method there is different way there is a different way altogether how to use the class methods Okay. this is your instance method this is your instance variables means these are local to your 
instance view. And how can we create? Let me give two minutes to that. We'll study that in detail tomorrow. Don't worry, let me give a brief glimpse of the same. Okay. Same way, I'm creating a class. Uh, the class name is sample. Okay. Here, putting here, colon, enter here. Now see, if you want, if you want something to happen at the class level, don't put it inside the init method. Is it okay? What I'm saying? Don't put it inside the init method. Put at the class level. Okay. Example, I create a variable x equal to 10. Perfectly allowed. Because this thing I'm not going to do at the object level. I'm going to do at the class level. This thing I'm going to do at the class level, not at the object level. If I need to do at the object level, then where would I have written this? Tell me. Where would have I written this? If I need to uh, define a variable at the object level, where would have I written it? Tell me. If I need at the object level, then where would have I written it? Remember this place. Init method. Yes. You would have written like this or written like this earlier. This way. We don't want this. We don't want. We don't. We want the variable to be the class level. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I type x equal to 10, okay? And so this is one attribute, but this attribute is at the class level, okay? This is not at the object level. This is at the class level, and it will be accessible by every uh, object of here. And if you change, make any changes to this, it will be reflected in every object, okay? So I did x equal to 10, this one. Let me show you one example. Let me copy it here. Let me copy the same thing here. Let me copy the same thing here so that you can understand. Matters I will cover tomorrow. Let me take it here. Okay. And here I place this one. Is it fine? Simple thing. I defined this one. Now let me run it. Let me run it. X equal to 10 I put. Now, how many variables the object will be having? Can anybody tell me? Or how many attributes the that will be having? Anybody can tell me? Let me just let me run it and see. Let me get an instance of this. Instance is known as S. Sample. Okay. Let me go inside and press shift tap. Again, needs two arguments. Okay. So suppose name is uh, again I read um, Ronnie and uh, age is let's say 21. Okay. Then that go to s dot press tab. Now see what is happening, please. How many attributes are s is having right now? And how many methods? Anyone, please. Two methods. Only one method. Methods yeah. are methods are always defined with the word F. Right? So we decide we declared any method here. No. Right? So we are having only one method that is wish method, nothing else. But we are having three attributes. This, 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 these all three are variables, right? But these two are instance variable. This is last, this is the way we declare variables, right or wrong? Tell me, how do we declare variables? Writing something A equals to three or A equals to four? This is the way we do? Agree or not? Tell me. Yes, sir. This yes, is sir. the way? So these, yes. this, is, this is nothing but a variable, but right now, it is nothing but your class variable or static variable. Okay. That's why it is available in that means some property you want to have every object should have this and every object should have a right to change that. Okay, something like that. so that we wrote here x equal to 10. And as this is not local to any instance, anything local to instance will come here. It is not local to that. So it will be available global means available, although it is also available, but what will happen? 
x equal to 10 anybody can modify anybody can modify okay so let me show you that uh even this anybody can modify but those changes in the hair means if you make some changes at the name and the age level they will be reflected in the object level and if we make some changes in the x level it will be reflected at the class level okay so what is happening let me check let me type a anything uh, age so it is available okay 21 let me type s dot uh, name run ronnie available s dot x 10 available perfect is it fine let me create a second instance let me create a second instance of the same and this time the name is supposed to say y and name is roni is place of roni i made Tony. and the name is age is 12. again same things are available for now only the name now will become Tony. Age will become 12, but X will remain 10 for now. Now see, let me, I want to show you something. Age is fine, perfectly fine. Y dot the name. So where I'm writing, sorry. Y dot name, Tony, perfect. Then Y dot X, 10. Now see, okay. Both are having 10, X equal to 10, Y equal to 10. If I make some changes in y dot h, will that change reflect in uh, s dot h? First, tell me this. If I make some changes in y dot h, will that change reflect in s dot h? No, sir. No, no sir. sir. Perfect, 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 hundred percent perfect. Now see, let me change and let's check it. Let me do one changes y dot h. I made uh, let's say thirty two. And let's check again y dot h okay 32 and let's see s h it will still remain same the age we provided i think 21 same now see i made changes to x x equal to um, 45 earlier what it was what it was 10. i made 45 right and remember this x is not instance variable it is a class variable so if any change that is going to happen here will be reflected at the class level means it is going to change for the s as well let me run it okay and check y again y dot x you'll see it 45 now check s again what happened why I made some mistake here or something? What happened? Why it didn't change? Just a second. What I missed something or something? Why dot x? The name is s itself. Okay, I think miss a keyword. Just a second. Just a second. Let me put a keyword. I'll explain you one second. Last method. Okay, let me run it. Uh, let me run it again and let me run. It again. Let me delete this so that I can miss it. Or let me run from the same point again. Y dot s 21 ages. Sorry. Oh, what just happened? We are putting here row name. We are getting age equal to 12. What's happening? Let me run it. Let me run it again. Perfect. Let me run this s dot name Roni perfect x dot x perfect y dot Tony perfect y dot h perfect y dot name perfect y dot x perfect uh, age equal to thirty two perfect age equal to thirty two perfect s equal to h twelve twelve you put the twelve or where it is coming from. Where this 12 is coming from? We didn't put 12 anywhere, I remember. This 12 is this. Y H 12, Y X 10, Y is equal to 32, right? Where this is coming from? Again, as dot H. How come it is happening? 
just a second again. Run it, 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 run it. Tony 10, age equal to 32, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now run this y to x. X thirty two. Let's put on X to be thirty two. What is happening? Why it is so? I don't know why it's happening. We should not occur here. I need to modify. I don't think so any error is happening here. Everything is perfect. There is no problem in the scene. X equal to 10. Uh, sir? Yes, yes, please. Uh, sir, the, uh, the class variable won't change, no, sir. So if, even if you run s dot x, it will remain 10 and no, so. No. Like in the last step, which you have done. No, actually, this is the thing. We want to change it. We want to change it. And that's why we want the changes to be reflected here. We want the changes to be reflected here. No? That's what but if we you want. Change in, if you change in y dot x, it won't reflect in s dot x. It'll, it'll be constant for s, s dot x. It'll, it'll only, no, only actually, change for this, this is what we wanted. We wanted the changes to reflect at the class level. That was our task. Is. Got it? This was our task. Okay. Uh, I don't know why it is not behaving this way. Uh, let me do this thing. Let me try one more thing. Let me hide this. Let me comment this. Let me comment this. Uh, comment this. Comment this. Okay. Run this. S1 equal to sample. Okay. S1 dot x ten perfect let s2 equal to sample okay let me check s2 dot x and uh, let me make some changes to s2 now s2 dot x equal to 12 instead of 10 done and let me check s2 Sorry, s2 dot x. Well, let me now check s1 dot x. What's happening? I will troubleshoot it and let you know tomorrow why I don't know what's happening here. I'm, I don't think so. I'm doing any error here. But let uh, me check sir, it. I, I, think, I think it won't change because it's it's so specific to only s1. In, in, it should change. It should change. It should change actually. These are the class variables, no? Otherwise, what is the use of them? They should change. Otherwise, there is no use of using them. Okay, sir. Uh, otherwise, uh, no makes no sense. Now, why we need to create even here? We need, no, need not to create here. We need not create here. I don't know how come it is happening. Let me check it. Okay, but I no issue. I'll let you know tomorrow why it is not happening. I'll troubleshoot it for sure. 100% I must be doing some mistake here. That's the only thing. Uh, so what if uh, we make the x variable as global variable instead of that's, that's fine doesn't that won't that the won't matter here here itself actually we see here x equal to 10 that belongs to this class only and this is attribute we want to make an attribute of this class we are declaring it outside the class that means it is not an attribute of this class am i okay we want some attribute specific to this class that's why we are declaring x equal to 10. okay so we are making some specific to this let me check it. I don't know why it is happening or something like that. It shouldn't happen because we are doing absolutely perfect. We are not making any error in this. Maybe uh, I'm missing some trick or something. Missing something or I don't know why it is happening like this because everything is perfect. We are not doing anything wrong. We are declaring S equal to 10. Uh, I don't know why error is happening. Let me, once more, let me try. 
Let me remove this. First time I'm facing this kind of error. I don't know what's the error. Why it is not able to do that. Everything is perfect. Uh, syntactically, we are 100% perfect. No error is here. I think we are having some logical error, right? We are having some logical error because syntactically, even runtime, we are not having any error. So syntactically, we, uh, we are perfect. Logically, we are doing something stupid. And where it is happening, I'm not able to get it. We'll try once more, S1 to sample. Uh, let me make s1.x uh, s1.x equal right now equals 10. Now let me create uh, s1.x equal to 20. Okay. And then let me check s1.x. Okay. Then let me create a new instance. Let's instance name is let's say s2. S2 equals to sample. Now it will work 100% sure. I'll tell you, I got the catch where I was doing the mistake. It will work perfect. Let me check S2.x. Fingers crossed. But still not. What happened there? It's still X. Why it is so? Why the change is not reflecting here? Don't worry, I'll get back to you on this tomorrow. Let me check it, okay? Why it's showing some error, why it is not changing? Because that objective should have been completed for sure. I am I missing some trick, I guess. So let me check it, I'll let you know tomorrow, okay? So I'm ending for today, is it fine? Okay, everyone, by the time, please uh, finish till this point, study everything that we have completed. I'll see this thing, why it is showing some error or something like this. I'm really sorry, if I, how I expect, I don't know myself. Oh, no. Yes, yes, please. Uh, for changing class variable, you use class name. Pardon? Class name dot x is equal to 10. Yes, sample dot x is equal to 12. So, actually, we are creating an instance. I think it should be reflected there. It should be reflected there. I don't think so. Why it is not happening? Because it is normally accessible the same way. We access our uh, instance variables. Uh, actually, sir, uh, may I say one thing? Uh, sure, please, please. Uh, sir, as in the case of Java, static variables are not allowed to change. And okay. uh, oh. for example, in this, we have used S1. Mm -hmm. S1 uh, for S1, the value of X is OK 10. But if you are changing uh, the variable for X for, uh, uh, for object S1, then mm -hmm. it is allowed. Once we are creating new uh, object for the same class, then again it has to pick the value x10. I think I so. Know. I don't know where I've used it. I don't know. I'm missing some trick. Let me check it here. Let me check it. Just give me a second also. Just give me a second. Let me see what mistake I'm doing. I'm not sure what happening here. Let me check it. What mistake I'm making somewhere, I may find this kind of thing. Observation uh, is fine. Here it is, it starts with an object. got it here got it the mistake i was doing i got it immediately got it and you were correct what you were saying no? that is perfect actually till this point i'm was okay this is perfect actually this is perfect this is the mistake i was doing got it what is happening here is x has been declared as 10 right it is the class level but we will be able to change it but how we'll be able to change it see this guy. how we'll be able to change it now see i define a function here uh, let's say def. Directly, we are not able to change it. And uh, CLS, let me show you something. And now it will change for sure. CLS dot x equal to 
CLS dot X example plus uh, anything one. Okay. Perfect. Now let me run it again. Hope didn't make an error. Let me get a sample of this. Okay, S1 is still 10. Now let me call the function dot modify function should be there. Uh, let me use it. Okay. Let me check. S1 dot X. It's 11. Uh, let me check now. Any other instance we created? I don't know. Sure, let me do that. Don't worry. S2 is equal to sample. Sorry, the name is sample. Okay, let me check here. S2 dot X. Done. Bingo. Got it. What I was doing here, I was modifying it directly. That was the biggest mistake. Uh, directly, we cannot change it. Directly, we cannot change it. We can change it. Directly, we are not able to change it. That was a mistake I was doing. I was changing it directly. Right? I was changing it directly. Let me explain you. Let me explain you in details what is happening here. Okay. I declared a variable x equal to 10, and it is at the class level. Okay. It is a class level. So this variable is available. Directly, you cannot change it. Directly, you cannot change it. As you are saying, you are able to change it. If you are making some changes, that will be available at the instance level. But if you want the class level to be reflected, then what do you have to do? See, to make any changes in this, or you want to make some function to work on this, okay? Means you want any function at the class level. I repeat once again, if you want any function at the class level, then you have to call a function decorator function. It is known as, there is a, this is function is known as, decorator function okay there is a function known as decorator function so we have to call this function that told that whatever function i'm going to write okay that should give me the power to change these variables that should give me the power to change these variables okay so how do i did i define a function any name you want to give and whenever you are uh, writing a function at the class level use the keyword cls Use the keyword CLS. And when you want to access that variable of the class level, when you want to access the variable at the class level, so we'll define CLS.x same way we are defining self.name or something like that. And whatever changes you want to reflect, whatever changes you want to reflect, for example, I wanted to increment by one. So I put plus one here. Once I put it here, now everything is working. For example, I'm again running it. Uh, please, someone is unmuted. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm again running it. Okay, I'm running the same code again. And uh, let me create the instance of this. And as soon as I run it, all the methods, how many methods are there now? There are two methods, wish method, modify method, and three variables, x, name, and change. Okay, x, name, age, name, and change. Okay, so what is happening? So suppose I want to uh, see age, it is still as available as we want to know. We have put the A0, didn't supply anything. That's why I did this thing. It needs two arguments here. Put two arguments, whatever you want to put. Suppose I put name Ram and I put a age to be 20. Perfect. I run it again. Then now I'm checking age. Age is perfect, 22. And I'm coming here. I'm typing S1 dot the name. Perfect. S1 dot uh, whatever you want to write. It's a your choice. Example, I want to write uh, uh, age is there, name is there, I want to check X, X is 10, perfect. If I'm coming here, s1.wish function is working. Now, if I want to change the value of X, I'm doing at the S1 level, but you will see that that will be changed at the class level. Okay. So I'm S1 dot, initially see S1 is 10. Now I'm typing S1 dot uh, modify function. I'm running it, see? So if I check the value of S1, X, it is available. Now I create another instance of same class. S2 is equal to uh, student. And this time the name student is suppose X, the name is student is X and his age is 23. 
run that instance is created i want to see is values that is s2 dot some mistake is there what happened or oh, so name is sample sorry the name is sample okay then s2 dot h perfect 23 s2 dot uh, name x perfect s2 dot x this was the main issue right let me check it here it has changed at the level right now x2 is 11 even if you make changes here that will be reflected at the s1 level see s2 dot uh remember the function modify now what it will do whatever value of x is we are having right now it will increment it by one so new value of x will become 12 now let me run it and check first of all for s2 s2 dot x and let me check s2 sorry s1 dot x now can you see the changes are reflected the changes are reflected so means you want to change it the mistake that we were doing we were directly using that that was the mistake i was i saw i was doing some logical error this was the error till that point i was right i was missing that i can change it i have to change it this way so we were able to change that but using this method. now is it okay please tell me everyone sir uh, cls is a keyword or yeah. object or is it an object no actually it is it's just telling me very much like we use the self uh, use the member in this function we use the when we defined wish we use self okay and what why we use self to just tell them we are referring to the current instance we are referring to the current instance okay. so while we are using cls we are telling them we are dealing with the class level not at the instance level or object level is it fine right means cls is a keyword sir not a keyword actually these are the some terminologies not mandatory cls but they like self not mandatory you have to use self this but this terminology the people use it's not mandatory to put the self all the time but most of the people 99.9 100% people put self there it's not a mandatory if it would have been keyword na it would have turned green Remember any word, any keyword in the Python. If we write any keyword, any keyword we write, it turned green. Example: print type type, it will turn green. Okay, int type type, it will turn green. If we type even str, it will turn green. So if any keyword is there, that will automatically turn into the green. So can you see? It's not green. Yes, not. Yes. That's the thing. So any any keyword in Python will turn to green automatically. See, the class is green. Def is green, right? This is green. So any keyword in the Python will turn to green automatically. Now please right. tell me, is it okay, everyone? Or should I explain once again? No issue with that. Okay, sir. It's fine. Okay. No issue. I will take this problem again tomorrow. We'll continue from this. What happened here and. Uh, did a blunder don't worry we'll we'll rectify that tomorrow is it fine everyone Hello. yes please yes, sir. Okay. sir we should use only modify yeah, any name any name, any any name. no 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 this is a you, your function you can put any name you want any name okay. you want uh, no matter okay. for example i just put a name remember these are user defined function names these are user defined functions. these are special function in it was a special function except that whatever we are defining here this is this is also special. You have to use this only at the red class method. Okay. This this is special. Okay, you have, you have to write it. But this is anything you want to name. Any name you want to put, you can put it here. The same way you can put any name here. Anything you can put. Not modify. Even you say uh, manipulation, you want to put any name. Manipulation or uh, my function, any name you want to put. Acceptable. Let me run it. Perfectly acceptable. And if I create an instance of this, it will be available here. You can see uh, press tab it's available is it fine yes sir so any name you can put doesn't matter you have to put modify any name any name is entirely your choice okay so i'm ending for the day uh, meet you tomorrow okay thanks everyone thank you sir thank you thank you thank you, thank you sir thank you everyone.